Another earthquake of 4.2 on the Richter scale occurred in China late at night in Guangxi. U.S. asks outside actors not to interfere in Taiwan's election as a 10th balloon is detected at Taiwan Strait. The relationship between Xi and the most influential general in the military is fraying. Health records still updating after death. Over 500 ghost records discovered in Heilongjiang. At 10.29 p.m. on January 4th, an earthquake measuring 4.2 on the Richter scale struck the Gulf of Tonkin, Beihai City, Guangxi, China. According to the China Earthquake Network report, the precise location is 21.05 degrees north latitude, 109.24 degrees east longitude, and the focal depth is 9 kilometers, 5.6 miles. In surveillance footage, a man ducked under a table when the earthquake began. It lasted less than 10 seconds and was felt around Yinhai District, Beihai City. Following the powerful 7.6 Richter scale earthquake in the Noto region of Ishikawa Prefecture, Japan, on January 1st at 6.08 p.m. on January 3rd, another earthquake of 4.1 on the Richter scale occurred in Huan'an County, Zhangzhou City, Fujian Province, China. Earlier on the evening of January 3rd, according to official data from China Earthquake Network, at 6.08 p.m. on January 3rd, an earthquake measuring 3.5 on the Richter scale occurred in Fuzhou, 24.76 degrees north latitude, 117.49 degrees east longitude, with a focal depth of 8 miles. In Haimen, Tangzhong, and Tuyan Chao, among other places, residents could feel the earthquake. As soon as the news was released, the earthquake in Fuzhou, Fujian province became a top trending topic on Weibo. Additionally, some people couldn't help but worry because from Kamran to Fujian at the end of the year, the local people were very anxious, hoping for a safe Lunar New Year. After Chinese netizens felt the earthquake, they wrote, It's frightening. My legs and arms are still trembling. The earthquake is so strong that the house is shaking. The windows of Dongxiang High School in Nanglam, Guangxi, shook for a few seconds. I just say that I felt the bed shaking a bit, and I think it's an illusion. In a press briefing on January 4th, National Security Spokesperson John Kirby said that the U.S. knows outside actors could interfere in the presidential and parliamentary elections that will take place on the 13th of this month in Taiwan. The outside actors that Kirby mentioned are said to refer to the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, the force that claims Taiwan as part of its territory. Kirby's comments came as Taiwan's Ministry of National Defense, MND, said on January 5th that they detected another Chinese balloon in the Taiwan Strait, the 10th Chinese balloon discovered around or over Taiwan since January 1st. Early last year, Chinese balloons were shot down by the U.S. Air Force while hovering over U.S. airspace. This event has sparked discussions that Beijing intentionally uses balloons for surveillance and intelligence gathering. In the press briefing, Kirby also said that the U.S. calls on anyone outside Taiwan not to interfere so that the people of Taiwan could have a democratic, free, and fair election. In an interview with VOA published on January 5th, Kirby said, We don't want any other actor, be it a nation-state or otherwise, to interfere in this election. Not only is Beijing accused of using balloons to monitor and pressure Taiwan's upcoming election preparations, but it is also accused of acts such as spreading false information, bribing Taiwanese officials, or installing spies to manipulate the election results in its favor. Most recently, a Taiwanese independent legislative candidate named Ma Chi Wei was detained on January 5th for alleged collusion with the CCP. China has also continuously increased harassment and intrusion activities in Taiwan's airspace and waters recently. The MND said eight Chinese aircraft and four Navy ships were detected hovering around Taiwan from 6 a.m. on January 4th to 6 a.m. on January 5th. Zhang Yaoqia, vice chairman of China's Central Military Commission, has long been Xi Jinping's right-hand man. Zhang has helped Xi maintain and consolidate power over the years. However, the relationship between Zhang and Xi has been different recently and has become tense. Xi recently dismissed nine military generals, including Defense Minister Li Shangfu. A source told Professor Yuan Hongbing, who once taught at Peking University, that these generals were disposed for plotting a coup. Epic Times cited political commentator Chen Pokong, who said that of the nine generals fired by Xi, three were Zhang's confidants. That is the cause of the severe rift between Xi and Zhang. Chen said that the situation in the Chinese military is now very complicated, with no faction loyal to Xi. 
Therefore, Xi is using one faction to fight another, consolidating his power. Chen added that Xi no longer trusts Zhang and relies on General Hu Weidong, another newly appointed vice chairman of the Central Military Commission, to deal with Zhang. On the other hand, Xi is also seeking to blockade and restrict a prestigious general, Liu Zhenli. Xi sought to avoid appointing Liu to the position of defense minister. Only Liu and Zhang have actual combat experience among the military generals. Xi's unwillingness to use Liu is shown by the fact that after Li Shengfu was dismissed, the position of defense minister was vacant for two months. Ultimately, Xi chose Dong Jun, a naval general, to fill the empty seat. Xi is afraid of Liu because he has a good relationship with Zhang. According to Chen, Zhang and Liu may join together to overthrow Xi. Zhang is a member of the Politburo and the first vice chairman of the Central Military Commission. Currently, he is considered the most prestigious and influential general in the Chinese army. So, Chen assessed that it would be challenging for Xi to remove Zhang. But as long as Zhang remains in office, Xi remains insecure. According to mainland media reports, on December 17th, recently, during daily supervision, officials from the Discipline Inspection and Supervision Commission of Longfeng District, Heilongjiang Province, discovered that a resident whose household registration information from the Public Security Bureau indicated he had passed away three years ago still had his health records regularly updated at the Community Public Health Service Center. Officials from this commission immediately contacted the local police and cross-referenced the health record information with the deceased person's details. Upon comparing the data, they found more than 500 records were stored and updated after the related individuals had passed away. These records involved 10 town health centers and public health facilities. According to reports, employees at these centers used retirees' accounts to create and update health records of deceased individuals to claim compensation. This news quickly became a hot topic in mainland China, with people believing it was just the tip of the iceberg. In early July 2022, the Shanghai Police database was hacked, and a hacker named China Dan publicly offered to sell mainland citizens' information and police case data on the 32TB cybercrime forum. Commentator Jing Rentao stated that he had researched and found that the hacker had obtained the entire data set. Notably, the data obtained by the Public Security Bureau was around 1 billion people, less than the officially announced 1.42 billion by the Chinese Communist Party. So where did these 400 million people go? Xing Rentao analyzed that the Chinese government's sealing off policies and lack of information transparency are blocking news about the number of deaths. The movement of patients have disrupted the original community connections to hide the actual death toll. In an interview video with a Tanjung official a few months ago, he also admitted that the only way to conceal the death toll is to lift the lockdown order. VOA reported that the disease figures announced by the Chinese Communist Party in the month of complete relaxation of epidemic prevention are surprisingly low, with only 30 deaths reported in a month. This number differs significantly from the large amounts of recently circulated textual and audiovisual documentation on the mainland and the difference in public perception. <laughs>